celebrate the holy light that illuminated Jesus as he was transfigured before his disciples. Let us prepare our hearts and minds to worship Almighty God. You'll notice my voice is a little lower. Well, it's better today. Wednesday and Thursday, there was no voice. So the doctor's work uh, efforts have been productive. It always seems to happen when I come back from vacation, but this was an entire vacation issue. So rest and relaxation, wonderful. And sun and warmth, wonderful. Uh, this afternoon, we will have our annual meeting via Zoom. I'll send out the link um, by quarter to uh, two so that people can log on and not be logging on at two o'clock. That would be very helpful so that we can begin the meeting at two and, uh, and then get finished with, with the, the business of uh, that is coming. And Gary has annual reports in Fellowship Hall, so you can pick one up as you leave and then check it out before we begin our meeting. And that will be also very helpful as we enter our business meeting. But business is also a part of the spiritual work of the church. Any other announcements? Let's turn in our bulletin to our responsive call to worship, Psalm 50, verses 1 to 6. The Mighty One, God the Lord, speaks and summons the earth from the rising of the sun to the place where it sets. From Zion, perfect in beauty, God shines forth. Our God comes and will not be silent. A fire devours before him, and around him a tempest rages. He summons the heavens above and the earth, that he may judge his people. Gather to me my consecrated ones, who made a covenant with me by sacrifice. And the heavens proclaim his righteousness, for God himself is judge. Hear, O my people. And I will speak, O Israel, and I will testify against you. I am your, I am God, your God. Let us sing our hymn of praise. I sing the mighty power of God. Number 128, if you're able, let us stand. <laughs>
to our unison prayer of invocation and confession. And let us pray together, saying, You, O God, are awesome in power and might. Heaven and earth are full of your glory. We honor you for revealing yourself to us in Jesus Christ. In him you make your love and mercy known. May our worship honor you as you deserve. On the Mount of Transfiguration, you told Jesus' disciples to listen to him. We confess we do not listen to Jesus, but we listen to the voices of this world. Forgive us, Lord. We confess we conceal your glory because we focus on our wants rather than the needs of others. Forgive us, O oh God. Change our hearts, Lord, so our attitudes and actions will not prevent us from revealing your glory to others. Hear us now as we lift our personal confessions in silence. God, who said, let light shine out of darkness, made his light shine in our hearts to give us the light of the knowledge of the glory of God in the face of Christ. Receive the good news through our faith in Jesus' death for our sins and his resurrection. We are cleansed and we are forgiven. Thanks be to God. Let us join our voices in the prayer Jesus taught his disciples, saying, Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our debts, as we forgive our debtors. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom and the power and the glory forever. Amen. Yes, I know, Elisha replied, but do not speak of it. 
Then Elijah said to him, Stay here, Elisha. The Lord has sent me to Jericho. And, and he replied, As surely as the Lord lives, and as you live, I will not leave you. So they went to Jericho. The company of the prophets at Jericho went up to Elisha and asked him, Do you know that the Lord is going to take your master from you today? Yes, I know, he replied, but do not speak of it. And Elijah said to him, Stay here. The Lord has sent me to the Jordan. And he replied, As surely as the Lord lives, and as you live, I will not leave you. So the two of them walked on. Fifty men of the company of the prophets went and stood at a distance, facing the place where Elijah and Elisha had stopped at the Jordan. Elijah took his cloak, rolled it up, and struck the water with it. The water divided to the right and to the left, and the two of them crossed over on dry ground. When they had crossed, Elijah said to Elisha, Tell me, what can I do for you before I am taken from you? Let me inherit a double portion of your spirit, Elisha replied. You have asked a difficult thing, Elijah said. Yet if you see me when I am taken from you, it will be yours. Otherwise not. As they were walking along and talking together, suddenly a chariot of fire and horses of fire appeared and separated the two of them. And Elijah went up to heaven in a whirlwind. In a whirlwind. Elisha saw this and cried out, My father, my father, the chariots and horsemen of Israel. And Elisha saw him no more. Then he took hold of his own clothes and tore them apart. Second reading is 2 Corinthians chapter 4, verses 3 through 6. And even if our gospel is veiled, it is veiled to those who are perishing. The God of this age has blinded the minds of unbelievers so that they cannot see the light of the gospel of the glory of Christ, who is the image of God. For we do not preach ourselves, but Jesus Christ as Lord, and ourselves as your servants for Jesus' sake. For God, who said, let light shine out of darkness, made his light shine in our hearts to give us the light of the knowledge of the glory of God in the face of Christ. And the Gospel is Mark chapter 9, verses 2 through 9. After six days, Jesus took Peter, James, and John with him and led them up a high mountain where they were all alone. There he was transfigured before them. His clothes became dazzling white, whiter than anyone in the world could bleach them. And there appeared before them Elijah and Moses, who were talking with Jesus. Peter said to Jesus, Rabbi, it is good for us to be here. Let us put up three shelters, one for you, one for Moses, and one for Elijah. He did not know what to say. They were so frightened. Then a cloud appeared and enveloped them, and a voice came from the cloud. This is my son, whom I love. Listen to him. Suddenly, when they looked around, they no longer saw anyone with them except Jesus. As they were coming down the mountain, Jesus gave them orders not to tell anyone what they had seen until the Son of Man had risen from the dead. May God add a blessing to the reading and hearing and understanding of God's word. Let us pray. May the words of my mouth and the meditations of our hearts be acceptable in your sight, O Lord, our strength and our salvation. Amen. How do we know the glory of God? All three of our passages reveal something about seeing, recognizing, knowing 
the glory of God. Elisha, Elisha, either we're actually saying Elisha, you can get the difference between the two names a little easier. He asked his mentor, Elijah, for a double portion of Elijah's spirit. Elijah told Eli Elisha, you have asked a difficult thing, yet if you see me when I'm taken from you, it will be yours. Otherwise, not. If Elisha saw the glory of God at work taking Elijah up to heaven, then Elisha would inherit a double portion of Elijah's spirit. And Elisha did see the glory of God taking Elijah to heaven. First, our lives are changed when we know the glory of God. We have God's spirit when we know the glory of God. Where have you known, recognized, or seen the glory of God at work? Psalm 19 tells us, the heavens declare the glory of God. The skies proclaim the work of his hands. Therefore, everyone has seen the glory of God at work in creation, in nature, whether at the ocean or a river, on a mountain or in a desert, home in your garden, sitting by your pool, or snuggled up inside during a rain or snowstorm like you had a couple of weeks ago, or at the birth of your children, we have all seen and experienced God's glory in creation, in nature, so that humans are without excuse. Peter, James, and John were the three disciples Jesus took with him and led up a high mountain where Jesus was transfigured before them. His clothes became dazzling white, whiter than anyone in the world could bleach them. And there appeared before them Elijah and Moses, who were talking with Jesus. Mark, the gospel recorder, said he was transfigured before them. Jesus physical appearance transformed. It changed. Matthew's gospel made it clearer, saying Jesus' face shone like the sun and his clothes became as white as the light. Moses had spent 40 days and 40 nights on Mount Sinai in God's presence while God gave Moses the Ten Commandments. But Moses was not aware that his face was radiant because he had spoken with the Lord. Like Moses, Jesus' face positively glowed from the glory of God with and within him. Like Jesus, our faces will glow from the glory of God with and within us. Reality television re represents a large part of television programming these days, and makeover shows are among the most popular reality TV shows. Whether the show does a makeover for hair, clothing, a house makeover, or manners. People love to see things transformed, made more beautiful. Jesus underwent something deeper than an external makeover. He underwent a metamorphosis. That is the word that tra translates as transfiguration. It's literally a metamorphosis. His face 
and his clothing became dazzling white, whiter than anyone in the world could bleach them. In other words, Jesus experienced the work of God, the glory of God through the power of the Holy Spirit, and his whole appearance externally as well as internally changed. The metamorphosis did not come from something in this world, something external. This transfiguration came from the glory of God. Second, we know the glory of God. From the transformation, we see on the faces of those who have experienced God's glory. Does your face glow from the glory of God with and within you? Does mine? It should. Then a cloud appeared and enveloped Jesus and Moses and Elijah and Peter and James and John. And a voice came from that cloud. This is my son whom I love. Listen to him. The voice at Jesus' transfiguration did not address Moses and Elijah. Yet, Moses the great lawgiver and Elijah the great prophet were part of the confirmation of, to Jesus of his mission. Jesus and his three disciples heard God's voice. <coughs> and when they did, Jesus was strengthened, encouraged, and empowered for God's further work in Jesus, Jesus' death on the cross for your sins and mine. A couple took their son, 11, and daughter, 7, to Carlsbad Caverns. Have any of you ever been to Carlsbad Caverns? Yes? Oh, no, okay. Two of us. All right. Well, it's in southeastern New Mexico. When the group arrived at the deepest point of the tour in the caverns, the guy prepared everybody, saying he was going to turn off all the lights to dramatize how completely dark and silent it is beneath the surface of the earth. The little girl, suddenly enveloped in utter darkness, was frightened and began to cry. Immediately, people heard the voice of her brother. Don't cry. Somebody here knows how to turn the lights back on. <laughs> Do you ever get afraid when the darkness envelops you? The message of the transfiguration is God can and does turn on his light in our lives. God transforms. God transfigures the best and the worst of us. The best and the worst in us. Light from God came to Jesus and light, God's light, comes to us even when the darkness seems overwhelming. We just have to ask. In his second letter, Peter confirmed the revelation of God's glory in the events on the Mount of Transfiguration, saying, we did not follow cleverly invented stories when we were told about, when we told you about the power coming and coming of our Lord Jesus Christ, but we were eyewitnesses of his majesty. That majesty was apparent in his transfiguration, his appearance transformation. Peter continued, for he received honor and glory from God the Father when the voice came from heaven, from the majestic glory, saying, this 
is my son, whom I love. With him, I am well pleased. We ourselves heard this voice that came from heaven when we were with him on the sacred mountain. Peter was there. He saw, he heard, he experienced the glory of God in Jesus' transfiguration. And he wrote about it so that we can believe and trust in God and his glory available to us. To the Corinthians, our second reading, Paul wrote, and even if our gospel is veiled, it is veiled to those who are perishing, that is, unbelievers. Paul referred to the veil that Moses put on his face after Moses left the presence of the Lord, so that the Israelites would not see when the glory, the radiance on his face, began to disappear. Paul continued to use the imagery of a veil covering the divine glory, saying, the God of this age, that is the devil, has blinded the minds of unbelievers so that they cannot see the light of the gospel of the glory of Christ, who is the image of God. Those who reject the gospel of God's transformative glory fail to see, they cannot see God's glory in Jesus. How do we know the glory of God? Third, when we accept Jesus' death on the cross for our sins, that allows us to see and know the glory of God in Jesus' death and resurrection. For there, on the cross, we most particularly see God's glory at work. Paul said, for we do not preach ourselves, but Jesus Christ as Lord, and ourselves as your servants, for Jesus' sake, for God who said, let light shine out of darkness, he said that in creation, made his light shine in our hearts to give us the light of the knowledge of the glory of God in the face of Christ. How do we know the glory of God? Fourth, we see the glory of God in the face of Jesus on the Mount of Transfiguration, but also at his baptism, in the miracles and healings he performed when he was on earth, in his teaching, in his response to the ridicule of the religious leaders, the mocking of the soldiers, the animosity that he endured at his trials, and most supremely, on the cross. There, in the person of Jesus, in the face of Jesus, we see and know the glory of God. Jesus, the Christ, the incarnate Son of God, authentically reveals God to us. He is the image of the invisible God. He is the image of God in which God created humanity and into which redeemed humanity is being gloriously transformed. What needs transformation in you, in me? Lent begins on Wednesday. Lent is a time to explore our transformation into the glory of God through the face and person of Christ. What in your life needs transfiguration, a metamorphosis? Here, at the table of the Lord, 
we remember and receive the glory of God. We open ourselves anew to that glory, God's transformative, transfiguring work. The light that now shines in our hearts is the knowledge of God's glory as it was displayed in the face of Christ, who came from the glorious presence of God in heaven. Here at the table of the Lord, <clears throat> we remember that when Christ appears, when he comes again, we shall be like him. Until then, we continue to pray, come Lord Jesus, give us your glory and make us like you. For that is how we know the glory of God. When God shines the light of God's glory in us and through us to others. Amen. The silver is mine and the gold is mine, declares the Lord Almighty. As we continue in a spirit of worship, let us offer ourselves and our financial gifts to God. The usher will receive the morning offering. Let's turn to God in prayer. God of every hope and joy, you transfigured Jesus on the mountain to strengthen him for all he would face in Holy Week. As we begin our Lenten journey, shine the light of your peace on our world. Fill our world with ethical, honorable leaders that all people might prosper and thrive transfiguring our world with the glory of Christ. Bring peace where hatred, animosity, political, ethnic, or religious differences cause strife and war, especially in Ukraine, Israel and Gaza, Syria, Afghanistan and Sudan. Strengthen peacemakers and peacekeepers. Banish the terrorism of the desperate and the arrogance of the strong. Heal our world of disease. God of every hope and joy, you transfigured Jesus on the mountain to strengthen him for all he would face in Holy Week. As we begin our Lenten journey, shine the light of your justice on this nation. Bring cooperation and collaboration to all elected and appointed officials especially President Biden, Vice President Harris, all 100 senators, 435 representatives, 50 governors, five U.S. territorial governors, and every judge. Transfiguring this nation into the beacon of light our founders intended. 
banish the stubborn, hard-hearted attitudes that lead to injustice. Protect the men and women serving this country here, overseas, and at our border. Heal this nation of every disease. God of every hope and joy, you transfigured Jesus on the mountain to strengthen him for all he would face during Holy Week. As we begin our Lenten journey, shine the light of your provision on our neighbors near and far, those in need. To the exploited, abused or mistreated, bring freedom and relief. To victims of natural disasters, bring hope and the assurance of your presence with them. Transfigure every situation that seems to be hopeless, especially for the desperate, despairing, and depressed. To the sick, the sorrowing, and the grieving, and the dying, bring your comfort and healing mercies. God of every hope and joy, you transfigured Jesus on the mountain to strengthen him for all he would face in Holy Week. As we begin our Lenten journey, shine the light of your love on your church. To every pastor and church leader, give renewed faith and the energy to live out that faith in ways that make a difference in the church and society. Bless your people wherever they gather in Jesus' name. Enable Christians everywhere to persevere and work to transfigure adverse conditions that do not reflect your glory. God of every hope and joy, you transfigure Jesus on the mountain to strengthen him for all he would face during Holy Week. As we begin our Lenten journey, shine the light of your grace on our extended family of faith. May our young couples individuals and families like Elisha ask you to inherit a double portion of your spirit. May our couples and those they love have relationships that make them say as surely as the Lord lives and as you live, I will not leave you. May each one gathered here and those unable to be among us see the light of the gospel of the glory of Christ who is the image of God. Anthony, Nicholas, Matthew, Dave, Sue, Oki, Joe, David, Anna, Gail, Gary, Joanne, Kathy, Gary, Dave, Matthew, Amalia, Oki's grandchildren, Josiah, Lydia, and Dominic, Gary, and Sandy J, Muriel, Babs, Chris F, Betsy, Cliff, Penny, Emma, Jean, Julius, Caroline, Tina, Anthony, Aregia, Todd G. God, make your light shine in the hearts of those we know and care about, who are struggling or just trying to move forward, to give them the light of the knowledge of the glory of God in the face of Christ. May those enduring life-threatening illnesses or grieving the loss of loved ones hear you say, you are my beloved son, my beloved daughter. Hear us now, Lord, as we lift the silent prayers we hold in our hearts to your throne of grace.
thank you that you hear our prayers, Lord, for we have prayed them in the name of our risen Savior, Jesus the Christ. Amen. Let us join in our hymn of preparation. Let us break bread together. Number 460. If you're able, let us stand. <coughs> not to express an opinion, but to seek the presence and mercy and glory of God. We come to this table just as we are, brothers and sisters in Christ. These are the gifts of God for the people of God. Therefore, let us come. Lift up your hearts. We lift them up to the Lord. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is right to give God thanks and praise. We do well to give you thanks and praise always, Lord. And we give you thanks because you created the worlds. You set the sun and moon and stars in motion. You created the beauty that surrounds us. You created us in your image. You sent teachers, prophets, apostles, and in the fullness of time, you sent your son, who willingly died on the cross to bear the burden of our sin, the penalty we deserve. We thank you that in his life and death, we have life. As we join our voices with all of the angels and archangels and all the company of heavenly hosts, we declare your glory, saying, Holy, Holy, Holy Lord, God of power and might, heaven and earth are full of your glory. Hosanna in the highest. 
Blessed is he who comes in the name of the Lord. Hosanna in the highest. We remember that on the night in which Jesus was betrayed, he took bread, and when he had given thanks, he blessed it, and he broke it, and he gave it to his disciples, saying, This is my body, which is given for you. Do this in memory of me, ministering to you in his name, I give you the bread. Let us pray. <clears throat> Bless, O oh Lord, this bread. May it be for us the body of Christ. And as we eat, may the power of your spirit fill our lives with your glory. We ask this in Jesus' name. <clears throat> supper, Jesus took the cup, and when he had blessed it, he poured it, and he gave it to his disciples, saying, This is blood of the new covenant in my blood, shed for you and for many for the forgiveness of sins. Do this as often as you drink it in remembrance of me. For whenever you eat the bread and drink the cup, you proclaim the Lord's death until he comes again. Ministering to you in his name, I give you the cup. Let us pray. Bless, O oh Lord, this cup. May it be for us the blood of Christ. And as we drink, may the power of your Holy Spirit strengthen and empower us for holy living. We ask this in Jesus' name. Amen.
cup is the new covenant in Christ's blood, ministering to you in his name. I give you the cup. Let us pray. We thank you, Lord, that you have met us at this, your table, by granting us the presence and glory of Christ, who is your image. We thank you that in him we see you. In him you have revealed your glory to us. Because we have shared in this holy and sacred meal, may our lives be renewed. May our lives be transformed, transfigured, changed, that we might be more like Jesus. We ask this in his name. And we join our voices declaring Simeon's benediction, saying, Lord, now let your servant depart in peace according to your word. For my eyes have seen your salvation, which you have prepared in the presence of all peoples, a light for revelation to the Gentiles and for glory to your people Israel. Amen. Let us join in hymn number 56, To God Be the Glory. If you're able, let us stand.
radiant holiness of God, our Heavenly Father, transfigured by the glory of God, the Son, Jesus Christ, our Savior, and releasing the power of God, the Holy Spirit, our companion on our journey. Let us go forth to love and serve God as we love and serve one another. Amen. Thank you.